Well, my friends, it's a rainy day in Munich. I'm glad I uh, saved the museums for today because yesterday was a beautiful day outside and today it's raining, it's cold. It's time to be inside, look at some history. Hey, look, good timing, that's my train. A rainy day on Odensplatz. So glad I waited till today to go check out some of the museums. Here we are, the residence of Muchen. Uh, this was a, uh, let's take a look at the side before I start spouting nonsense. The Munich residence served as the seat of government and residence for the Bavarian dukes, electors, and kings from 1508 to 1918. As you can see, there are different options of what you want to see. There's the residence, the treasury, the theater. It tells you how, many, how long it'll be walking around those places, combination ticket. I think for me, I'm just going to stick in the residence today. You can get these little devices so you can listen along and learn the history. But we're just gonna keep going. Check this out. I know the rock. some pictures. Now you can see all along the wall as far as it goes and all the way back all the ruling people of the areas all the statues intricate detail in each one it's incredible a lot of uh, Roman influence and the ceiling. That is incredible. You have the entire history of the families on each side, up, down in paintings, where they're from, Landsberg, as well as uh, drawings of their villages, of their towns. So they're like the families of those areas, the ruling class. You got everybody looking good. And you got this guy. He is too cool for school. Or he's dead. Follow the arrows. Ah. No information though about the paintings. Here's another one, looks like the same battle. Ah, see here you can even see the different flags, the different banners. Oh wow, look at that. The early days of optical illusions. The 3D effect is great. Look at that. Those, that's all painting. All these rooms are apartments for the royals and their friends visiting. Every room is so grand. Amazing how many different rooms there are that serve their own individual function. Just a little tea room and a tea cabinet. This is the room you would come in if you were a foreign diplomat to come meet with the elector. Such displays of paintings of history on the walls. This was all very popular in the 1700s to collect for Europeans, a lot of Asian influence, Chinese, Japanese, porcelain, like most rulers. It was important to have a massive collection from all over the world. Here we go, we actually have some paintings with information, although I can't understand it. 
And from here we go into here where the architecture changes dramatically to a red brick. This is the court church. It was built between 1826 and 1837. During the Second World War, this place suffered a lot of destruction. It wasn't actually till 2003 that it was reopened to the public. Looks like they still hold some functions in here. So all these paintings in here are frescoes of the Italian countryside. Um, luckily, a lot of them were stored in bunkers during the Second World War to keep them uh, protected. Only three were lost of the 28. Very beautiful. Now we head into the court garden rooms and chambers designed to house the princes, the guests. The tapestries in here are just massive. So large and detailed. Another bedroom. The uh, music room of the first Bavarian King, Max. This was a reception room for the first Bavarian King. All pictures of his family on the walls. That's a beautiful piece. So this room was used as a dining room for uh, visiting people. It's called the Prince Room because of the depiction of the prince on the ceiling there. Strutting his stuff. This room is called the Room of Justice because of the depictions of uh, law and order on the ceilings. It looks like the commandments. This is uh, the entrance room that the guests would come in and they would choose their apartment, either over here, they'd have that whole place to themselves, or to the other side. Another room that was used as a dining chamber for visiting guests, called the Room of Council, because of the depictions on the ceiling and the paintings on the wall. What's amazing is every single room has these beautiful tapestries. Oh my gosh. Wow. Look at that. Incredible. This room was built uh, 1610 to 1612 as an imperial dining hall. It was called the Four White Horses Hall because there used to be a painting up here on the ceiling of four white horses. It was lost during the Second World War. So much lost because of war. This room is called the Room of Elements. And at the time, there was thought to be only four elements, each depicted in the corners here. Used to be a painting of Pan, the god of chaos on the ceiling, but that was destroyed during the World War II. Here we have the Room of Seasons, and on the ceiling, is a depiction of the seasons. Poor winter. This place is huge, and I'm going to be here all day if I don't keep moving. I'm gonna keep walking through and making my way out of here. Fantastic Munich residence. So much history. You could spend all day here. All the religious relics held by the dukes believed to have a religious importance, spiritual importance. Religious reliquaries were usually um, tokens and things given significance thought to be belonging to Jesus or, or, you know, blessed by God himself. Erected after 1600 by the Duke Maximilian the uh, royalty would go down there to have a uh, church while the guests and visitors would gather in the galleys above. The ornate chapel was private for the duke to meet with the priests 
to consult God. As you can see, the top is the portal to the heavens. Very beautiful room, meant for uh, visiting guests, diplomats during the day, needing something to do, you can come walk around the green gallery. And there I am. Now I'm in the green gallery. The state bedroom was reserved for the uh, most elite of visitors and guests staying on the grounds. Here we have an infinity mirror effect going on. This whole room was created as a room of mirrors for visiting uh, diplomats staying in the state bedroom. They could come here and change clothes, try on different things, make sure they're looking their best. The third waiting and reception area to meet with the queen. Ay, ay, ay. It never ends. Rooms upon rooms upon rooms. This is the queen's throne room. Once you get through all seven waiting rooms, you finally can meet with the queen. After meeting with the queen, she invites you in here in the social room, her writing cabinet. And next door you have the library. And now from the queen's area, we enter the king's bedchamber, the king's dressing room, the king's study, the king's reception room, and of course, the throne room. This room was the king's battle room. And this is the king's second battle room. More amazing paintings depicting great battles. Room after room showing off the extravagance of dining and wealth. I said I was gonna leave, but I... <laughs> You get distracted one thing after another, the royal palaces, more and more rooms, chambers, audience chambers, throne rooms, apartments, hallways, corridors, uh, courts, bed chambers, closets, changing rooms, dining rooms, the list goes on and on. There are just so many rooms showing off everything. Oh my god. This place is, is too much. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot to do. I think they said two hours maybe? No, 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 no. You wanna do this right, you're in here for five hours at least. This is a lot to do. So for here, this is enough of the Munich residence and it's time to continue our adventures. I'm following signs, exit this way, exit this way. And as I do that, I'm finding more rooms. You could easily spend at least five hours in there. I don't even know the point of getting the audio device because that's gonna take even longer having to listen and, and listen to the whole experience. But if you're into that, then this is the place to go. History, culture, royalty, the Munich residence. The next adventure is to get to the Deutsche Museum, which is supposed to be the largest technology museum, science and technology museum in the world. All right, my friends, here we are in the plaza of the Deutsche Museum, and we are heading in. So let's go in together and see what it's all about. Whoa, look at that. Oh, science. Oh. So far, these are some of my favorite. These little dioramas showing what the places looked like. They're so detailed. Fantastic. Look at this one. Look how far it goes back there. That is great. Oh. Look at them go. Dang, look at that. Whoa, look at this room. The room of marine navigation. Electrical power. Electricity. The power. I have the power. To the cave. To the cave. To the cave. Oh. 
ancient pots. Less ancient pots. Blowing glass. Toys. More toys. Ceramics. Bricks. Music. The early days of a music studio. Clocks. Bigger clocks. Wall clocks. Pocket watches. Fancy clocks. Clocks from the Black Forest. And more clocks. We all want to know, how many clocks do we need? Cups. Scales. Space. Astronomy. Telescopes. Bigger telescopes. The biggest telescope. Active optic technology. Satellites. X-ray and gamma X-ray technology. More telescopes. Binoculars. Radio. Radio. Antenna. The universe, the earth, globes. Pausing here to look at the view. Sundials, the planetarium, closed. Boats and ships and boats and ships. Learning how to fly from the birds. Flight. Look how ridiculous this guy is. What is he doing up there? The power of flight and war. Hello there, friend. I've got a bad feeling about what you're flying. I don't think that's gonna work. Kites. Led Zeppelin. Airships, the early days. Hot air balloons. You too can get your pilot's license. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Gay Pride. Magic. Produce your own power. Nuclear. Nuclear waste. And that's it for the Deutsche Museum. Wow. Massive place. Huge. I can't really tell which one's bigger, that one or the one in London. They seem kind of the same, uh, different reasons. Uh, I think the one in London can show off more um, historical like things, like they actually have the stuff there in the place. This one's more about teaching you education, uh, how things work, how things used to work, how they work now, how we're progressing through our history with our technology. Really cool really good time but now it is time to continue the journey munich has been a good time it's time to go to nuremberg my friends that is the next stage of our adventure i just walked into the konak restaurant asked to use their wi-fi and they said have a seat and they served me up some chai tea and the little thing they said it's on the house but of course i'm going to make sure i give them a tip Oh, that was very nice of them. Well, my friends, we have made it to Nuremberg. And tomorrow we go to Nuremberg Castle. A little confusing on which is where and what is what. But all I know is that we're here. We have one day tomorrow to explore the castle and maybe something else, some other local area. And then it's on to Prague. We're getting around in all the best of ways. Good night.